Would you turn to Hebrews, please? Hebrews or Hebrews? Hebrews chapter 1. Glory to God. <laughs> In verse 1, would you read it with me? God who at various times and in various ways, say various times, various times. in various ways, various ways. spoke in time past, time past to you and me, multiple times, through circumstances, through his word, through dreams, through visions, through revelation through people. He speaks to us in various ways. You cannot tell him how God should speak to you. See, people come to accustomed to one way God speaks and they miss what God is saying. God will speak through his word. He'll speak through a heathen. He can use anyone. You could be driving down the road and all of a sudden you're like wondering what the heck and a truck will drive by and there'll be a sign on it. You come to a bumper sticker and it's like, man, I know that the Lord, there's no coincidence that God put that in front of you. See, but because we're, we, we've come to an area to where we're bound by the only way God can speak and we've got to stop this. Because when the Spirit speaks, He tells us things to come. He guides us to all truth. We know all things. And in everything, it's to bring glory to His name. He says that God spoke to the fathers by the prophets. Has in these last days spoken to you and me by His Son. Whom He has appointed heir of all things, through whom also He made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power. In other words, what he spoke is still upholding. Look at when he spoke, it didn't stop. What he spoke is still moving. It still moves. Because movement is life. And in this arena that when God spoke, that means now we connect into what is still moving because his word's still moving. And it says all things are upheld by his word. It's his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the ma majesty on high, having become so much better than all the angels, as he has an inheritance, obtain a more excellent name, the name, which is the name above all names. Jesus, the name where every demon must obey, where sickness must flee, where fear is destroyed. You know, people are wondering right now, even in our country, what is the will of God for the office of president. See, there's the will of man and the will of God. We know that things have been predestined, but predestined doesn't mean it's going to be fulfilled. Predestined means it takes cooperation. You and I were predestined to have the opportunity to be rescued, but not everyone will accept it. Amen? And then those who've been rescued have rejected after a period of time. They've run away. They turned their backs on God. So it still takes the price of cooperation to maintain the state of freedom. This is not a religious act. This is not a religious Bible. This is a manual because we are on a mission. It is a military mission, not some kind of foolish religious mission. Only the devil promotes religion. God promotes freedom. So God speaks various ways, various times, in multiple ways, multiple ways. 
And so many times when we're praying and we're asking God for an answer. And, and this is something that's really hit my spirit. Because we're waiting for God to do something. Everybody is, aren't they? Amen. And there are things that God is going to do. And there are things that God is going to release for you to do. And there's two things that occur. He's going to speak to me and you. He's going to answer prayer. The word says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added. Amen. There's a place where you and I must seek his righteousness. So that's when you seek his righteousness and you're looking to please him, aren't you? If you're not looking to please him, then there's a problem. And you don't know. And his desire is that you know him. That's his major desire, that you know him. And that you know him as a father, and you are known as his child. And what he begins to do then is he answers prayer in multiple different ways. So he may answer a prayer by manifestation of something. He may send somebody across your path. You may be waiting for something. He knows exactly what you and I need. Amen? But there's something important. We cannot become anxious. If we become anxious, we miss. That means we're trying to do it in our own self then. So what God does is he releases what we call his wisdom. His wisdom. Why? Because he's either going to answer through a manifestation or he's going to answer through wisdom. And that wisdom is going to tell you how to fulfill your request. Does everybody get this? See, so many times we're waiting. There are people who are still waiting on God. And God said, listen, I already gave you the wisdom to do it. But people become lazy, complacent, compromising, and caught up in the world. See, they're looking for the world to rescue them instead of the Lord to rescue them. That's why when people go to doctors, right, people go to doctors, now look at God uses doctors, amen? I don't think he uses psychiatrists, though, but anyways. <laughs> Those guys need wisdom from above, not from beneath. Because every psychiatrist you go to, the only wisdom they know is from the world. And that says, here, take this. And the person is in a worse state than they were. Because they don't have the wisdom from above. Is everybody, listen, when you go to a psychiatrist and he offers you medication, tell him to get behind me. Get behind me, homie. Tell them your medication is the word of God. That's your medic. You don't know, need no, any antidepressant. Amen. Now, don't get me wrong. There may be a chemical imbalance. So go get the stuff to get balanced. But don't take medication. It's not going to balance you. It's going to put you over the edge. And then you go in cycles and in circles like a dog chasing his tail. Again. There are doctors, don't get me wrong, God can use anyone. But let me tell you, so does the devil. Because they went to the school of the devil. Hello? Who's behind everything here? Who's the ruler of this earth? Satan. Amen. Does everybody understand that? So he brings education, doesn't he? Now look, at you and I get the education from the world so we can use it to infiltrate the world. But we use the wisdom of God to use the wisdom of the world. We do not allow the wisdom of the world to use us. Does everybody get this? There's a difference. And too many times people exchange. Because see, that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to exchange the wisdom of God for the wisdom of the world to promote you. We don't want to be promoted. We want him to be exalted. Amen. Luke chapter 12. Now, it doesn't mean that if you want to become a doctor or a nurse or a policeman, that you are not going to go to school and, and, you're, and think that God is going to give you every answer of every test. 
without studying. Well, if God wants me to pass it, I don't need to do anything. If God wants me to be a doctor, that's not cooperation. Amen? Same thing as being a servant of the Lord. It takes training. Amen? We must know the quickening of the Spirit. We must know God's voice. And even when he doesn't speak, we still must know his voice because he speaks in different ways. And again, when you're waiting on something, he, it's either going to become manifest at some time or he's going to speak to you by releasing wisdom to you so that you fulfill it. Who do you think Jesus is? He's the wisdom of God. Did he come to fulfill the will of God? He came to fulfill the will of the Father, not his own, didn't he? So the wisdom of God came in this world. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke 12 and verse 41, I think. <clears throat> Would you read it with me then? Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, do you speak this parable only to us or to all the people? And the Lord said, to who then is that faithful and what? Wise. Wise steward. A wise steward means a wisdom from above. Whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them their portion of food and when? Due season. Blesses that servant whom his master will find doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and, becomes, and begins to beat the male and female servants and eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know yet committed these deserving of stripes shall be beaten with few. For everyone to whom much is given from him, much will be what? Required. We are given much. And to whom much has been committed of him, they will ask the more. A wise steward is using the wisdom of God. There's something I want to share. It's called the voice of wisdom because wisdom has a voice. And 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Why? Because wisdom speaks from God. You know, people get in trouble because they're not using the wisdom of God. They're using the wisdom of the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Everyone say, the voice of wisdom is the wisdom of God. First Corinthians chapter three and verse nine. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? First Corinthians chapter three and verse nine. For we are what? God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a what? Wise master. He's a master builder. In other words, he was building with the wisdom of God, not according to the wisdom of the world. As a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation and another builds on it. But what? Let each one what? Take heed how he builds on it. In other words, he's going to compare the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. For no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation, which is what? Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. But the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. Why? Because it was built with what? The wisdom of God, 
not the wisdom of the world. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet is through the fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Now look it. He says, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If any among, among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may become what? Wise. Wow. Let him become a fool, that he may become what? Wise. Very interesting. Well, let's go a little further. For the wisdom of this world is what? Foolishness with God. The wisdom of this world is what? Foolishness with God. Hmm. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Everyone say, all things are mine, because I'm in Christ. We want to be wise builders. What does that mean? Building his kingdom, taking care of kingdom business with godly wisdom. Amen? You know, the wisdom of God instructs me and you. It tells us how to build. It tells us when to build. The wisdom of God instructs. In fact, the wisdom of God is counsel. Exodus 35. And the wisdom of God is a voice. Exodus 35. <clears throat> verse 30. Would you read this with, with me, please? Exodus 35, verse 30. And Moses said to the children of Israel, See the Lord has called by name Bezalah, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, and the tribe of Judah. And he has what? Filled him with the Spirit of God. He has filled him with the Spirit of God. That's why it's so important to stay filled with the Spirit of God. Why? In what? Wisdom and understanding in knowledge, in all manner of what? Workmanship. Workmanship. To design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of artistic workmanship. He's put it in their heart. Why? Because but he had to first fill them with what? The Holy Spirit. See, that's why it's important. When we begin to get drained from the world, we begin to lose sight. We begin to lose wisdom of God. We begin to lose the voice of wisdom. It becomes duller. And then what we do is we actually pick up the voice of the world. And we begin to listen to more of what the world is saying than what the voice of eternity is saying. And one brings bondage, and the other brings freedom. Amen? Fill with the Spirit of God, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to become a good steward. With instruction, we need instruction. We need discernment so we can discern between the influence of worldly voice of wisdom and the godly voice of wisdom. Again, one brings freedom. Actually, the other one brings sometimes not only bondage, but management. That's why when you go to some of these doctors, the only thing they know, especially psychological arenas, they only know how to give you something for management. So what they're trying to do is manage your demons. Amen? We don't want to manage our demons. We want them out of here. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Voice of wisdom. The 
The voice of wisdom is the wisdom of God. First Corinthians chapter one and verse eighteen. Would you speak this with me, please? For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolishness the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom, but it isn't godly wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But those who are called, everyone say I'm called. Both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Come on, let's go on further. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Hello. We did not have the wisdom above. We were surviving. And that's all it does is bring us into a state of survivalness, the wisdom of the world. But the wisdom that comes from above puts a state of surrender. Verse 27. But God has chosen the foolish things. Yes, I was number one. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh. But of him you are in Christ. Everyone say I'm in Christ. Who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So understand that as you and I are seeking the Lord and we are praying, one of the things as we pray, we want God's will to be done. Amen. We are praying God's will. And God's will will be done in a manifestation. And in that manifestation of his will, because one of the things the word says is, if once you fulfill his will, the promise is released. That's a manifestation of his will. So he's going to release to me and you wisdom and how to fulfill his will. Does everybody get it? Because it isn't our will, it's his will, isn't it? So that's something that needs to be asked for on a daily basis. Lord, grant me more wisdom from above. Grant me more wisdom. Even when you're doing something, Lord, I need your counsel. See, that's what the Holy Spirit, that's why it's so important to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In Proverbs chapter 2. Is everybody okay? So how's God going to answer us? Through manifestation or through what? Wisdom. Does everybody get that? In verse 1, let's speak it. My son, if you receive my words, in other words, if you will listen to my voice, and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your what? Ear to what? Your ear to what? Your ear to what? Why? Because there is a voice of wisdom. And apply your heart to what? Understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures. He's talking about wisdom. His wisdom. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord. That's reverence, honor, and respect. And find the knowledge of God. 
See, but there are many who don't cry out. There are many who don't seek. They are content with the wisdom of the world and call themselves Christians. Verse 6. For the Lord gives wisdom from where? His mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for what? The upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of the justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity and every good path. When what? When wisdom enters your heart, not your mind. This is not a mind thing. See, because the world likes, brings, the wisdom of the world does not enter the heart. It only enters the mind. The wisdom of God goes to the heart. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. What, the knowledge of what? The knowledge of him. In other words, you desire more. You want to know him more. There's an area where you want to just see God in everything. Verse 11. Discretion will what? Preserve you. Understanding will keep you. To deliver you from the way of what? Evil. From the man who speaks perverse things. From those who leave the path of upright. So are those, there are those that leave the path of uprightness? Yes. To walk in the ways of what? Darkness. Look at they exchange the wisdom of God for the wisdom of the world. Who rejoice in doing evil. And delight in perversity of the wicked. Whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths. To deliver you from an immoral woman or man. From a seductress who flatters with their lips. Who forsakes the companion of their youth and forgets the covenant of their God. For their house leads down to death and their paths to the dead. None who go with her return. This is the wisdom of the world. None who can see the Lord calls his wisdom her. And the world tries to always counterfeit. None who go with her return, nor do they regain the paths of life. So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep to the paths of righteousness, for the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be what? Cut off from the earth and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. So we need to be tentative to the voice of wisdom. Amen? So that we can be master builders. So we can make right decisions. So that we can be instructed of the things that are coming. In James chapter 3. You know, the world is going to be taken by surprise here shortly. James chapter 3. You know, at one time, you and I were actually hidden in darkness. We were actually hidden in darkness. God hid us there. Even though we were serving the devil, he had people interceding for us. Because the only way you and I are still alive because people prayed for us. Amen. It was the prayers of the saints. So God kept me and you alive and hid us in darkness. And then at some point, he said, okay, slapped the devil in the head, said, come, come. And when we came, he said, okay, I'm going to give you a choice. You have an invitation to follow me or reject me. Many followed. Some rejected. You know what they said? I'm not ready. Can you imagine Jesus showing up and inviting you to come somewhere with him? And they said, I'm not ready. <laughs> You'd have to be an idiot. Plum dumb. I'm not ready. <laughs> How could you not be ready? That's because we were deceived at that time. Amen? Why? Because we still liked uh, the wisdom of the world. 
Hallelujah. James chapter 3. Verse 13. Let's speak it together. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by what? Good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of what? Wisdom. But if you have what? Bitter. Hello. If you are bitter. Envy. Self-seeking. In your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is what? Is what? Is what? Earthly. earthly wisdom. So what does God call earthly wisdom? Sensual and what? Demonic. Hello. It's going to pass away. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. Then peaceable. Gentle. Willing to yield, full of mercy, and good fruits. Good fruits, not rotten fruit. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who what? Who make peace. Listen, when you and I get counsel from the Lord, it is the voice of wisdom. That's his counsel. Amen? But again, the enemy will exchange or steal the wisdom of God for the wisdom of the world. That's his job. He comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? And so many times, people are just influenced. They, they begin to drift. And in that drift, they begin to pick up more of the wisdom of the world and lose the wisdom of God. Because it's our responsibility to maintain the infilling and connect. Everyone say connect. 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 When there's a disconnect, people grab other things, don't they? Amen. Colossians chapter 1. You know, if the Lord was to show up right now, we would be trying to say, well, Lord, I did my best. Or we would be saying, I did your will. See, it's two different things, isn't there? Saying you did your best is looking for an excuse. We, may, we need to stand before him and say, I did your will. Amen? Colossians chapter 1. Oh, glory. And what's going to take to do his will? Cooperation in wisdom. Verse 9. Let's speak it. For this reason we also since... Chapter 1, verse 9. The day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. And to ask that you may be what? Filled with the knowledge of his will in what? All wisdom and what? Spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy. Give thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the what? Power of darkness and conveyed us in, into the kingdom of his son of love, of his love, in whom we have what? Redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace 
through the blood of his cross. You didn't hear about things in the earth, did you? Or any things on the earth and in heaven. Because there is no reconciliation from hell. Verse 21. Let's speak it. For you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed, if indeed, it's going to take cooperation, isn't it? You continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. So there's that area where you and I must continue. Remember, salvation is not a one-time event. It's a lifetime event. It continues. See, so many people, they say, well, okay, you're saved, man, go ahead. You're all right, cool. Go out and do whatever you want, mom. No, you don't need to know the word. You don't need to do anything. Sorry. Why? Because we want to constantly exchange self for him so that we can not only be his voice, we can carry his wisdom, be his hands, be his feet, his presence, his love, and his compassion. Amen? His will is in all wisdom. His will is to build by his wisdom, allowing us to walk in the spirit and build his kingdom, manifest his will by the voice of wisdom. Amen? James chapter 1. Voice of wisdom. I th really believe that we needed clarity on wisdom today. In verse 2, are we ready? What does it say? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. When you fall into various trials, not if, but when. You will be challenged. Every one of us is challenged. You will be tempted. You will be tried. You will be thrown in the fire. Yeah. It says this. Why? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. That word patience means endurance. We need to endure. Not quit. Not run. Endure. When things get tough, we get tougher. As I already get this. You know, people think that Christians are wimps. We should be the most powerful people on the planet. People think we're stupid. Oh, he's a Christian. He doesn't know. You can do the get away with this. Not with this, homie. I'm going to call you out. I'm going to call it out. Yo, bro, you just stole that. Drop it and repent. So I, before I slap the hell out of you and put heaven in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, we don't need to be wimps. Did you ever see the video about the Holy Ghost linebacker that tackles the <laughs> bunny rabbit and Santa Claus and stuff? Oh, man, you need to look that up. He didn't take no garbage. We need to be linebackers. <laughs> All right, now, verse 4. Is everybody there? Why do we, okay, God's going to test us. The enemy's going to allow, God's going to allow the enemy to t challenge you too, amen? All right. It's the testing so that you and I have endurance. But let patience have its what? Perfect work. In other words, don't run and don't blame somebody else. Hello? Quit blaming people for our dumb decisions. 
you make a wrong decision, confess it. Confess it to the Lord. You don't have to go around and unload your dirty laundry to everyone. Amen? Let patience have its perfect work that you may be what? Perfect. And complete and lacking nothing. So he explains all this and then he tells us how we're going to get it. What's he training us for? So we can hear the voice of wisdom. But let him ask in faith. Oh, if any of you lacks what? Wisdom. Let him ask of God who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And let him, let that man not suppose that he's going to receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. So understand that the voice of wisdom is going to bring stability. If we cooperate. But if we don't cooperate, listen, when you reject the wisdom of God, you accept the wisdom of the world. Amen? And Psalm 1. Psalm chapter 1. You need to ask for wisdom constantly, even what, no matter what you're doing. Lord, I need more wisdom on this. Now, he may bring you to something to read. He may bring you to somewhere to search out so that you can get it, right? But when it comes from God, it is different. It doesn't puff you up. It builds you up. See, the world's wisdom puffs them up. Does everybody understand that? The wisdom of God humbles you. In Psalm 1, oh, glory. In verse 1, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the world. It's called the ungodly. Let's read it. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the truth or the law of the Lord. And his law, he what? Meditates day and night. In other words, it's always before him. God's truth, his word is always before him because the Lord is always before him. It says that he will meditate in that day and night. And this is what the fruit of it's going to be. Verse 3. He shall be like a what? A tree planted by the rivers of water, constantly drinking, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall what? Prosper. Just because it doesn't prosper that day, it will. You know, when you plant a seed, you can sit there all day long and wait for it to pop. And get discouraged because nothing came out of the soil. And blame God because he didn't answer your prayer. Or blame the weather or blame whatever. But you didn't endure and allow God to bring the increase. Amen? We got to allow God to build the house, not us. That's, that's something that is a constant thing in every decision. Everything that we're always doing. You know, we have a tendency to begin to build the house. And wait a minute, wait a minute. But I, I can sense my hands in this. Why? Frustration comes. There's an opposite between frustration and peace. There's an opposite between anxiety and stress and surrender. See, so we know by the fruit what's building the house. Amen? It says in verse 4, But the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? They shall perish. Why? Because they don't have the voice of wisdom. They reject it. They reject it. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, So understand that 
wisdom is just not always implanted us, downloaded. Does everybody understand that? It comes by what? The voice of God. It comes by what? The voice of God. And who's the carrier of the voice of God? The Holy Spirit. Amen? That's why it's important to stay filled with the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, and we've read this multiple times. Are you ready? What does it say? Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Hello. Why? Why is this going to happen? Of course, we know that the falling away is, we're already in it. It's, it's already happening, the falling away. We're watching people go, drift, get way out there, man. It always starts with letting go of one hand. And then the other hand lets go. Unless that other hand is brought up. And it's harder for that person to get back. Because they've drifted. The longer it takes to drift, the harder it's to get back. And then that, they begin to look. They get in survival mode and use the wisdom of the world. Instead of surrender mode in the voice of wisdom. Amen? And we're seeing that. And one of the things that says in doctrines of demons, there are multiple doctrines going out there where people are not discerning that it's not of God. God is warning his people. He is raising up watchmen. Everyone here is called to be a watchman right now. That means we must be able to see what's getting ready to happen. We must hear what God is speaking to prepare for what's getting ready to happen. Amen? Listen, all the circumstances of our life that has gotten us here. Amen? All kinds of circumstances, regardless of what. It doesn't matter how we got here. We're here. So that means somehow, some way, God ordained this for you and me to be all here together in the presence of God to hear his voice in this specific day for a specific purpose. And to prepare us for what's getting ready to happen. Amen? Or prepare each and every one of us for what the enemy is about to try to do. And I want to close with 2 Timothy chapter 4. And this is what the Lord would say to us today. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. What does he say? Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. In other words, this is not about a feeling. This is not about a feeling. Bury your feelings. Be ready in season and out. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Are we there? Amen. It's now. It's happening. The falling away is happening. But according to their own desires, their own feelings, their own emotions. Because they have itching ears. Why? Because they've lost the voice of wisdom. They will heap up for themselves teachers. Or they'll go find somebody who will agree with them. It's amazing. And they will turn their ears away from the truth because they no longer are lovers of truth. And be turned aside to fables, lies, false doctrine, doctrines of demons. Feel good. Feel good messages. But you be watchful in all things and endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your mission. Fulfill your mission. Because the end result is it only takes one last breath. And then you're before him. That's it. And either you've done his will or you haven't. Amen? That's that. So we need wisdom, don't we? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we welcome the voice of wisdom.
we welcome. I pray today, Father, that you increase wisdom to every listener, everyone that is here today. And that you would speak to us clearly and simply. That you would visit us in dreams and visions and revelations. And that you would express yourself in us and through us. That we may give glory to your name. And that may people may see you and us in Jesus' name.